Welcome to our learning series, episode number six. I'm going to talk about web maps. The reason I've chosen this to be the next tutorial is this is the first Flip Fluids tutorial using Blender 2.8. Actually, there are some issues where Blender 2.8 crashes when trying to bake or render things, so I'll show you how you can avoid these things. The principle of generating web maps is simple. We will use Blender's dynamic paint feature to generate an animated wetness texture and use it in combination with a mix shader to cover your object with it. Okay, I keep this video as short as possible, so let's start with an already finished simulation, the rolling torus. This is a scene. Let me change the viewport shading to rendered and let's switch the fluid mesh to preview to have a faster playback. You can see the toros rolling down the ramp and some water splashes here and there, but one thing is missing. Nothing becomes wet. So let me introduce you in how to generate a working web map for this scene. We need a correct UV map for the toros because this is what Blender will use to generate a matching web map image sequence. We will start with the wrong setup and check its result and then we will fix it. In this way you will understand what can go wrong using Dynamic Paint. Switching over to the UV editing page while the torus is selected will show you how the actual UV map is looking like. We have to select everything by hitting A to make the map visible. When everything is selected, we can press U to open an unwrap pop-up. And when we click on unwrap, you will just see one score in the UV editor. This represents a single face from our object. So when scaling the score, you can see how the torus texture changes in each of its face. I think you know how an animated wet map would look like when using this default UV map. To have a correct working one, we have to define some lines where the UV grid will be cut. It. In your head, think about a real paper torus. We are going to cut it to unfold it. In Blender, these cutting lines are called seams. And they will be made of edges that we have to define. Try to mark one edge that surrounds the torus completely by holding the Alt key and right-click on an edge while being in the edge select mode. And let's select another one that is surrounding in the other way by holding Shift-Alt and right-click the other edge. Then click UV, mark seam, select everything and unwrap it. By pressing tab, we can exit the edit mode and check how the texture is surrounding the object. Of course, how seamless it will look like depends on what textures you are using and how good you make your UV map matching it. Okay, if you don't have a seamless texture and don't would like to see the mm, split edge on top of your object, you should choose the inner surrounding edge as a seam in place of using the outer one. Let's change this now. This looks good, but let's get back into edit mode and see here. Some squares are squeezed and not perfectly aligned. And here's a simple trick to fix this. Search for a nearly perfect score and scale all its edges to zero along its axis. An example, this square here. I select this horizontal edge, hit S, Y, zero, enter. And then choose the other horizontal one and again S, Y, zero, enter. Repeat this on the vertical lines too. So select it, hit S, X, zero, enter. And again, S, X, 0, Enter. When finished, select this face and move the mouse to the right split of the editing page. And unwrap it with Follow Active Quads, 
with the length average setting. Hit OK and see how good our fixed single phase works for our UV map. By leaving the edit mode we can always check how good UV unwrapping works. To complete our map and have it as good as possible, we just need to scale the whole UV map to fit perfectly to the texture. So while everything is selected, open the UV menu and click on Pack Islands. And as you can see, the texture is seamless now. That's all about the UV map. Back to the modeling page, we select our simulated fluid surface. It should work as a brush that paints wetness onto our torus. So in the physics tab, we enable dynamic paint. Select brushes type and click add brush. That's all. But one hand here, only use mesh volume as paint source. I've tried mesh volume at uh, proximity in example, and that gives strange results. So please use the original settings. And as there is a brush in our scene, we need a canvas to paint on, and this will be our torus. So select it, enable dynamic paint, and add a canvas to it. We need an image sequence, so let's change the format to image sequence. Set the frames to match our scene. This time from 1 to 250 is correct. And I recommend uh, you to use some sub-steps for some smooth motion of the web map. Try 5. The higher you choose the resolution to be, the higher the quality will be. I'll set it to 512. Um, higher values will take longer to bake, of course. Now we have to choose if we would like to see some effects for our web maps. There's dissolve, dry, and effects like spread, drip, and shrink. And of course we made a comparison for you to have it easier to find great settings. So let me show you this comparison video. Okay, the solve seems to do nothing. Maybe because it will not work with this kind of dynamic paint setup, I don't know. Maybe it's a bug or I'm missing something. It could also be something that works only with paint maps but not with web maps. Dry will make the wetness dissolve in a natural way. And spread looks like the wetness is expanding on the surface, while shrink looks like the surface is absorbing the liquid. Drip uses gravity and acceleration to influence the course of the wetness. So I think dry, spread and drip would look good in our scene. Okay, next step, the output. I recommend you to use one folder for one object's image sequence. In this way, importing it works fast and simple as you do not need to find the correct files for your object. In this scene there is only one object, the torus. So let me create a folder for it. Cache underline dynamic paint torus underline tutor and very important choose the UV map disable paint maps enable wet maps and type in a name like toros wet map this will be the file name for the image sequence Okay, now we are ready to bake the web map, but please save the scene before you go. Actually, for some people, Blender crashes very often when baking or rendering scenes. And to be able to bake the image sequence without a crash, you need to minimize Blender to the taskbar as fast as possible after clicking the bake button. Okay, here we go. And now, a good way to see how it's working is to open the image sequence folder. See how fast Blender is saving the web map sequence. Please keep in your mind that the export speed also depends on if you are using the generated preview or final mesh from the simulator. I'll say, I'll say something uh, more about this later. We could open one file and check the sequence. Looks interesting, doesn't it? 
The reason why everything is black and white here is that this image uh, images will be used as a controller for mixed shader, where white parts will affect how shaders will be mixed. And in general this will be two shaders, the original shader of the torus and the shader of our fluid. But that uh, depends on what you are looking for. Okay, baking has been finished, as we have 250 images in our folder. So open Blender from the taskbar, and uh, great, we didn't have a crash, yes! Time to shade. Open the shading page. It would make sense to have the wetness of the torus as a result of contacting it with our fluids, what means we need our fluids shader. Select the fluid surface and copy its node setup without the material output node. Simply copy it to your clipboard. Select the torus and paste it there. Add two mixed shaders. One will be used to mix the fluid shader with the torus shader and the second will mix this result with the torus shader. In this way we can use the second mixer to control the wetness factor. Let's keep this to maximum wetness for a while and let us import our image sequence. Simply add an image texture, click on open and choose the folder you set up as output for dynamic paint. As told you before, if you would have more than one object and multiple image sequences, you would need to search the correct files here and select them. But as we decided to use one folder for one object, we simply can press A to select everything and click on Open Image. That's the best way. Please check if your frame settings in this node are correct. Normally Blender detects the number of frames and will automatically fill in the right information. We just need to enable the Auto Refresh checkbox to tell Blender to load images frame by frame. Last thing is to connect the node's output to the factor in of the first mixer node. Now Blender will use the white parts of the image sequence to control the mix shader. So let's check it out and play the animation for a few frames. If you feel like something is not correct here, let me tell you that there's another issue with Blender. Sometimes it's required to close Blender and then reopen the project to make sure the last image sequence will be written into the cache. So let's save the project, close Blender and reopen the project. And it's still looking wrong. Wetness appearing on the wrong parts, but why? I told you we would make a wrong UV setup and check how it will look like. And this is the result. The thing is this, having a perfect UV map for your object does not automatically mean that it is the optimal UV map for dynamic paint. Dynamic paint needs an untouched version of the UV map, what means we have to add another one specially for our web map. Ok, so let's make one. While being on the UV editing page, make sure the tour still is active. On the right, split, jump to the object data panel and add another UV map. I'll call it UV wet map. But make sure for rendering, the first UV map keeps being active. In the UV editor, use the drop down box to select the new UV wet map. It's looking like the one we finished before, so it would give us the same wrong result. Just unwrap it in the normal way again. Press U in the right split, unwrap and that's all. Of course we need to rebake the image sequence now. Open the physics panel and make sure you select the new UV wet map for dynamic paint. And once again be fast but first safe, of course. Let's go! Ok, we can check the folder to follow the baking progress again. 
Great, it's finished. Let's maximize Blender and go back to the shading page. We just need to tell Blender that our web map image sequence should be mapped using the new UV map. So add a new node. Input UV map. Connect it to the vector input of the image texture node and select the UV web map. Now please save the project and restart Blender to make sure the alt cache will be overwritten. And let's check the animation. Yes, it's working! We can now use the second mix shader to control how much wetness will be visible. And we could tweak some fluid shader settings. In example, make the color some darker and add a bit of roughness. Okay guys, congratulations! You are now able to bring some wetness to your scene. Finally, I want to give you two more tips on the way. For the first tip, please select your domain object and take a look into the Flip Fluids panel. You can choose a higher resolution for the preview mesh. Even if the resolution is equal to the final mesh setting, the simulator will output a preview mesh. This will speed up your workflow a lot. The viewport playback is much faster and baking the web map works much faster too. In the final rendering, you would see the final mesh fluids with a preview mesh based web map, what still looks fantastic. Only if the highest possible quality and precision is required, I would use the final mesh for baking web maps. And the second tip is use the latest experimental flip fluids add on builds available on the Blender market. It brings two fantastic things to avoid Blender crashes simulating and baking with a command line launcher. Actually, this will only work with Windows as operating system, but you will find it by opening the tools bar and jump to the Flip Fluids panel. Once you set up everything for rendering, you can click on Launch Render and then close Blender. Baking or rendering will continue. And that's all! All right. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Please subscribe my channel and check my other videos. Goodbye.